Spectacular. Even for Hueytown, and we know what spectacular is. That was really something. There's nothing in racing that gets me more than the head-to-head -head competition you get on a drag strip. Now they're hitting speeds that only planes could go a few years ago. And at those speeds, it's easy to go from king of the hill to the bottom of the rock pile. The tales of climbing up, falling down, and getting back on top again, and staying there. Those are the stories from which legends grow. It is just such a story we're going to tell you on this edition of Winners. The story of Don Fredon, the legend they call the snake. Well, I'll tell you, the best time of the drag races for me is when I put my head sock on and put my helmet on and buckle it down and no one can really talk to me. And the only thing I look at is just right through here, and that's the best time. That's the snake doing a quarter mile in about five seconds at around 300 miles an hour. It takes guts, coordination, and concentration. And you gotta get off that starting line fast. Fast as a snake striking at a rabbit. That's why they call Don Perdome the snake. He's always gotten off the line better than anyone. And today, we'll show you how he earned this spot on winners. Winners is brought to you by Fram Filter Products. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And Autolite Spark Plugs and Wire and Cable Products. Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. Now listen up, you're going to learn something here. In baseball, it's the stare the pitcher gives the batter. In boxing, it's the glare the fighters give each other before the bell rings. Ah. But on the drag strip, it's known as the game face. And as in other sports, it's done for one reason, to intimidate your opponent. They say no one does it better than the snake. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. You know, uh, it's so funny. My, my daughter teases me about it, too, uh, uh, from time to time, because she's about the only one that can really get away with telling me what to do, I guess, her, her and my wife, Lynn. But uh, she tells me I put this, uh, this uh, face on that where I'm not approachable where people won't approach me because they look like I'm in a bad mood. And most of the time I'm not, but I think that's right. I think I wear this uh, this face at the races that uh, so people don't bother me. Yeah, he has that game face. And I think a lot, of, a lot of that is just the concentration on the goal of winning the races. It takes a lot of concentration to drive the car. And he sometimes weeds out all the uh, distraction, concentrates on the goal and pursues that. And I think that's what gives him the winning edge. When it comes time to race and we pull up to the to the starting line, I mean, then that's when we go to war. So, I mean, he puts his game face, I put him on my game face also, and I mean, uh, I'm not going to be intimidated by Don Perdome. He would like to intimidate people, and I know that he does intimidate people, but some people he can and some people he can't. Over the years, there have only been a few drivers that Don's game face and racing skills didn't intimidate. And as a result, he says, he hasn't had that many close friends at the track. I like the guys. It's just that we're all in different parts of the country, you know, and out in California, probably McEwen. I talk to him more than anybody. Uh, Ed McCullough, him and I are pretty good buddies. We've been doing about the same length of time, but, but I, I'm, not, I'm not real tight with too many of them. You know, a lot of people think we may all hang around together and go, you know, drink some beers together or something, but every so often we're on the road we do, but, but not, not usually at home. I, I'm a, quite a family man at home. I mean, I enjoy my daughter and my wife and our dogs and things like that. Oh, he's been a tough competitor ever since I started racing with him 35 years ago in the Mongoose and Snake stuff came up through the Mattel Hot Wheels and all that. We know we've been good buddies, but very fierce competitors on the drag strip. And uh, usually if you beat him, you can usually win the race. That's a big if. And it's been a big if since winning his first Top Fuel National event in 1965. The next five years in the top fuel category were pretty successful for Perdome. But then in 1970, they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. 
A guy by the name of Tom McEwen, the Monica's, my good buddy even today. Uh, he came by the shop one day and he was telling me that uh, uh, he had talked to Mattel Hot Wheels and uh, they're interested in sponsoring the Mongoose Snake. McEwen's name was the Mongoose at that time, of course. And we were having our little match races and so on. And, and so Mattel got a hold of us and um, uh, decided to sponsor the Mongoose and Snake, made the little Hot Wheel cars. And, and so that's really where the funny car thing took off because they wanted us to run funny cars. Uh, dragsters weren't, weren't that big a deal to them. The funny cars with the bodies, the, the fire coming out the pipes, that was exciting for them. And, and I, I started liking the cars. I didn't really like them at first, but uh, as I got into it and started making real race cars out of them, that's, that's when I got hooked in funny cars. Not only did he get hooked, but the fans got hooked. As the snake took the funny cars like a duck takes to water, after things went on for a while, we started learning about aerodynamics and getting the cars in the wind tunnels and so on. That was a major breakthrough in funny car racing. And the cars really turned into a, a super machine. And once again, I didn't really want to drive the car first because it was called a funny car. Man, I wanted a top fuel dragster. Yeah. I didn't even like the name funny cars, but as they progressed and as they got real sleek and aerodynamics were involved with them, I started really liking them. And, and then I, I went after a championship and, uh, and, and really, really did well. As a matter of fact, uh, one year we won seven out of eight national events. And at that particular time, there was only eight national events. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad. Snake made a lot of firsts in his funny car. The first to win four straight national championships. The first to go 250 miles an hour. And the first to break six seconds for the quarter mile. But then, the snake got snake bitten. He didn't win a race in 83, 84, or 85. And in 86, he couldn't even get a sponsor. I asked him what happened. I was burnt out. I was flat burnt out, you know. Uh, 85 come around and we weren't having a real good year, you know. I spent those years winning the championships. And I, was, I was real, uh, real disgusted, to be honest with you. And, uh, things weren't working and the sponsorship wasn't there and uh, it just I needed a year off and so when the sponsorship didn't come around I said well, that's fine that's fine you know so I just took 86 off and as a matter of fact I was really uh, entertaining the thoughts of just quitting racing altogether then the snake shed his losing skin he won in 87 he won more in 88 and in 1989 had his best weekend of racing ever. He won the U.S. Nationals, the Bud Shootout, set a new record, and won more than $100,000. Don Perdome was back, big time. And now that he had done it all in funny cars, he was ready to go back, back to his future. There's nothing like, like staying there on top and, uh, and enjoying success, you know, to, to, to have something really working for you. but. But deep inside, it, it's just something I needed to do. But still in the back of my mind, that, that top fuel car was uh, was an area that I wanted to go into before I quit drag racing, before I quit driving. So, And on top of that, there was a few other reasons. You know, the engine's behind you. You don't have that fire-breathing baby sitting in front of you that if you watch films on force, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They catch on fire and it just flick, you know. So I, I needed to kind of think about getting out of that area because of the fire. And, getting into top fuel, the engine behind me, and, and once again trying to win the championship in that division. Some of those fires Don spoke about are just spectacular. But believe me, I know from my NASCAR days, when you're in a fire, you just want to get out of that car as fast as you can. I asked the mongoose and snake what it was like for them. Fires used to be the most serious problem we had years ago, and we all wore the Simpson safety equipment with all the good stuff, but uh, when you're sitting behind the engine and you have a fire, and without those onboard fire extinguishers, you're, uh, you're like a roast in the oven. When you're in a funny car and going through a fire, some of those fires like I have, the, the first thing that's going to your mind is get out of it. Get it stopped and get out of it at all costs as soon as possible. But the problem is you can't because, you know, you're traveling 250 miles an hour, 270 miles an hour, and it's sliding. But by then, it's already burnt the parachutes off it. And then the next thing is you're holding your breath the whole time because you're trying not to breathe a lot to get the fumes and whatnot in your lungs. You know? You're just you're holding on, man. You're riding it out, and you can't see nothing. I mean, the lights are out, and you're... You hear a lot of tin scraping and scratching and oh, you, you know you're in trouble. 
And, you know, when it, finally when it comes to a halt, you just, you know, you're out and trying to get some air and just get out of it. It's, it's a horrible experience, trust me. Horrible. With plenty of car fires behind him, and now the engine of his new top fuel dragster behind him, the snake was poised for the new challenge. We'll be right back to find out what keeps Prudhomme's competitive fires burning. We'll also spend some quality time with what has to be the world's greatest snake charmer. When everyone says you're one of the best ever, and you're still competing after 27 years, you're likely to be called a winner. But just what is it that drives a Don Prudhomme so hard for so long? Well, the woman who's been charming the snake through 30 years of marriage has a pretty good idea. Perseverance. I mean, when things aren't good, he will go back, and he'll go back, and he'll go back again until they get it right. That's, that's the secret, I think. We met in an arts class in junior high school, and it wasn't love at first sight. It wasn't anything like that. He had a big crush on my girlfriend because she painted her hair pink in art class. That's Until you're from mean. California, she had pink hair. You, you got it way before it's time, but it was kind of a joke. I think we did it for him, but I'm not sure. But I helped her paint it pink. When you and Don started out racing, it certainly wasn't like this. What was it like in the beginning? It wasn't like this. I mean, we're sitting in a nice lounge in a nice trailer. We used to travel. We had a little dog named Sudsy, and Don and the dog and myself, no crew, no anything. We had an old green station wagon with the trailer on the back. We'd get in the car probably March, maybe the beginning of April, and we would travel until we got done with the season in October or November. There were no holiday inns. There were maybe a Howard Johnson if you were really lucky because we were down the turnpike and we'd stop and eat a clam sandwich. I mean, it wasn't like it is now. And Don has the same fond memories. Although things have changed, you know, years ago we used to work 24 hours a day and, uh, and you know, going back a few years, uh, when I started this game, uh, uh, it was my wife and myself and our dog that went on tour and my crew members was somebody that I'd pick up at the drag ship, ask some kid to give me a hand, of course they were willing to jump in and do whatever they could do and, and then, man, I got to where I could afford one more crew member, you know, so, uh, you know, to bring a guy on full time. But, uh, that's how I got started, and today, you know, once again, we've got you know, about six employees and put other people on from time to time, so it's a whole different world. And you're up to two dogs, huh? I'm up to two dogs, yeah, I'm up to two dogs, that's right, yeah. Reggie and AJ, yeah, two dogs. Leon, what is it about Don that makes him tick? What makes him want to just keep racing and winning all the time? I think it's something that he was born with. I think that if it hadn't been cars, if it had been horse racing. I mean, if he had been a jockey, he would have been the same. He's very competitive. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is snow ski. I love skiing, and I've been skiing for many years, and Don used to ski a lot years ago, and he, he's a good skier. But the last 10, 15 years, he won't ski anymore, because he knows he's going to break his leg, and it'll put him out for the season. And I said, you don't have to ski like that. If you're going to ski, you're going to ski like that. I mean, that's, he's that way about most things. He, he just likes to be the best or to try to be the best. Everybody used to ask me, did you get scared when you get in a race car? I, I think it's kind of controlled atmosphere, but the, does it scare you when Don climbs and that thing runs 300 miles an hour? I think you're always concerned, but I think the longer that you do it, and I've seen Don in some horrendous accidents, and you just know that he's, he's really safety conscious. Everything that he's ever built has been built with safety in mind. So he's not taking any additional risks other than the risks that the sport have to begin with. And he's, he's very safety conscious, so you worry a little, but you worry more about them losing than you do getting hurt. What do your wife think about this this sport? The way I mean she's been with you as it's grown long. What does she think about it now? Well she better like it. I mean we, I've been doing it so long, she's been with me so long uh, that uh, uh she likes it. She likes it a whole lot. Yeah, it, it hurts her too when things aren't going right, but she she's just been a real real supportive person. I, I, I couldn't have done it without her, there's just no way. You think there's that fear with her with you in these cars at this speed? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear about that. Yeah, 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 sure. If she's scared, I'm going to get hurt. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, 
because I have gotten hurt, and uh, she's seen me turn over twice in, in, uh, in 1990 when I went from funny cars to top fuel. You know, I uh, first run down the quarter mile in a new top fuel car. I broke a front wing support, and the car turned over backwards halfway down the course. The following year, we went out to uh, Montreal, and I'm running there, and the thing uh, did the same thing. Didn't break something. I just made a mistake, you know, and the thing flipped over backwards, went over the guardrail, and, and, uh, and I... You know, I was okay, fortunately, but, man, I seen that look on her face, and it isn't good, you know, and, and I know that uh, someday, you know, she's going to want me out of it for sure, you know. When that someday comes, what will be next for Don? Well, once again, the snake and his charmer are thinking alike. He, of course, he told me he was going to quit when he was 35 and that we whistled right by 35. The only time he ever lied to you. <laughs> exactly, sure. Um, probably a few more years, but I can't see him ever getting out of the sport. Out of the race car, maybe, but not, not out of the sport. The future for me, um, I'll probably own the team and have a driver in the car. That's, that's the near future. Uh, the distant future would uh, perhaps someday own a Winston Cup car. That would probably be the distant future. I, uh, I really enjoy that a whole lot. I enjoy the, the management side of things, and, and I think I'd be a doggone good uh, car owner. One of the reasons Don will make a darn good car owner one day is that no one knows more about the special relationship between car and driver, especially as both get ready for a nitro-methane quarter mile. For me, the run starts the minute they bolt you in the cockpit, because when you get in our cars and you got your helmet gear on uh, uh, and you're down in there, you're, you're pretty much, uh, it's all your baby. All the talk and all the gunnas and wannas is, is all over with, you know, it's, it's up to you. So when it fires, when it fires the line, it's your time to go. There, it just, you just don't fire it up and go out there and do a burnout, you know, you have to set the fuel gauges on the car and get the temperature right on the, on the engine, you know, get the fuel pressure right, roll off into the bleach box, open the fuel up and do a burnout and don't do it too hard, don't do it too, I mean, it's, you can blow the blower off the doggone thing, you know, so there's a lot going on there, get the car back and, uh, and get ready to run the car, then you, then it's another world. Don, I think the average race fan realizes there's so many G's pulling on your body when you take off that line, but I think we all overlook the fact that stopping at 300 miles an hour, what kind of jolt is that? Yeah, it really is, yeah. It, it works on your body pretty good. You know, stopping it, uh, getting the chutes out, uh, and when they catch you, but, but my car, and like most cars nowadays, have been set up with special chutes that they don't open too hard, you know, because, you know, like Joe Models had neck problems from opening the chutes and, you know, really, really hurting himself, but... Uh, there's some g-force down there but you mentioned the g-force taking off uh, that's another good question i, I get asked that because that thing on a real good run like you run like a 499 or something like that you know and you run 300 miles an hour you're you're running uh, right at five g's and it'll maintain that for about two and a half seconds into the run the five g's you know so that's uh, that's, that's pretty stout g-forces are not the only stout pressure for drag racers we'll be right back to tell you about the ultimate, the search for the perfect run. Funny cars and top fuel dragsters certainly have changed dramatically since the snake and mongoose went head to head. But even though the cars are going faster today, I couldn't resist asking the snake, are you mellowing? Yes, yeah, sure, you bet. Yeah, you, you, it's just, just the nature of the beast, you know, it's just the aging process, you know, and uh, I, th I think everybody does that. Um, uh, for the better, though, by the way. I, I, I like myself better today, I perhaps, than I did uh, uh, 30 years ago when I first started because I was so intense and didn't have time for anybody. I enjoy uh, this. I enjoy seeing people. Uh, uh, you know, I do a little charity work, Madonna Day School, Memphis, Tennessee. Got some kids down there I really like and I spend time with. You know, you'd go in Mac Band 10, 15 years ago. Nah, you know, I was too busy. I was too, too involved with what I was doing, you know, so... Yeah, things have changed a little bit. Sound like you're enjoying life a little more now. Yeah, a little bit more. I still like winning, though. You know, that's, that's, that's still there, trust me. That passionate pursuit of winning has always been there for Perdome. But in all the races and on all the tracks throughout all the years, he's never seen the perfect run. What I say is there's no such thing as the perfect run because you always come back. Man, I don't care. Like the other week, we went 301 miles an hour, 301.60. 301 well, 
Well, I was aggravating it didn't roll 301, you know, 303, you know, after that. Yeah, that's just the racer and you coming out. Yeah, man, because, you know, you see a little niche on the computer screen, you know, John Mel and Coochie will start looking at things and say, man, we could have run a little quicker here and there and there. So I suppose if there was such thing as a B perfect run, I'd just never do it again. You know, that'd be it. It'd be over with. It wouldn't be any fun anymore. Well, then, we can all be thankful that Don Perdon never did have his perfect run. If he did, we might not be here telling this story. I'll tell you what, I sure had a good time hanging out with Don this week. I'm looking forward to hanging out with all you next week, right here in Hueytown, for another episode of Winners. Winners has been brought to you by Fram Filter Products. Fram, you can pay a little now or a lot later. And Autolite Spark Plugs and Wire and Cable Products. Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. Next week, catch a special edition of Winners featuring Neil Bonnet and his guest host, Daryl Waltrip, next time on Winners. <laughs>